Okay, so if you guys take a look at this one here, pretty similar to the stuff we were doing yesterday. Looking at a cell, they're giving you the half reactions. They're giving you the reduction potentials, all right? And that's more of the presentation. You don't always have to dive back into here to get your reduction potentials, but just realize you guys are going to have that at your disposal. And you always get your equation sheet. A uh, little note uh, from a webinar I sat in on last night. Um, there's some stuff we're going to have to pre-print before the AP test. And I know we're looking out almost a month, but uh, just start thinking about if you have access to a printer uh, that you could print out this periodic table that you wouldn't need these. This is old school. You don't need that anymore, but you'd get your equation sheet. All right. And those are the things you have. You get your calculator, make sure you have a calculator that works. And on the 28th, there is another webinar that shows me how to walk through your test day. So it puts me as a teacher in your shoes as a student. So I'll see what you see. And I'll be able to go through the experience from your end with the whole upload and all of that. So then what I think we'll do after that is I know I'll do it with you guys specifically, but we may just do an entire school wide AP Google meet so that you guys see what it looks like across the board in all your classes. But uh, that'll be more to come on a later day. Just kind of keeping you guys in the loop as I get more info. All right. So in this question here, they give us an equation. It says it's a galvanic cell. And the balanced equation for the spontaneous cell reactions are shown above. Right? So we know it occurs naturally. The two reduction half reactions for the overall reaction are listed. And they list them both as reductions, but because they gave you an equation here, you already know that one got flipped and one stayed the same, and it's exactly what you would expect, right? The 1.49 is more positive than the 0.77. So this guy stayed the same, and this guy is the one that flips. All right, so it says on the diagram, clearly label the cathode. All right, so trying to jump around, you know, pick your brains a little bit as we go through. Um, Sydney, I think I saw your face when I logged in. Are you with us today? I am. Wonderful. Um Remind me what happens at the cathode in terms of reactions. Um, all of the um, electrons are moving towards the cathode, and when they combine with the solution, it like it does on like the cathode, like increases the mass of it. I like it, right? So Sid said that it's electrons flowing into the cathode and ions swim up there and attach to it, all right? So what's happening is, is we got to figure out the flow of the electrons and remember the trick. It's the red cat and it's the an ox because reduction occurs at the cathode and oxidation occurs at the anode. And we know reduction is gaining electrons. All right, so you take a look at your half reactions, and the reduction is the one that's gaining electrons. So it's whoever's electrons are on the left in the reaction, which means it's the MnO4. All right, so the MnO4 compartment up there has to be the cathode. All right, so right up here in the picture, just right next to this guy right here, go ahead and write cathode. All right. Letter B says calculate the cell potential all right, for the spontaneous cell reaction. All right. Mia, you with us? Yeah. Hello. Um, if they ask us for like the E, O, what is it they want us to do? Um, they want us to flip the less negative equation. Is it less negative? Good. Oh, so okay. talk me through the math. So you're going to flip. Would it be the... Yeah, flip the top one, right? So we've got 
the 1.49 and the 0.77. You said the 1.49 stays, the 0.77 flips. Yep. When we flip it, what happens to the 0.77? It's going to turn into a negative. All right. So then we do the math on that. Right. So you take your 1.49 minus your 0.77. Looks like we've got a 0.72 voltage. Right, so that's what's going on for letter B there. All right, in C, it wants to know how many moles of electrons are transferred when one mole of MnO4 is consumed. All right, Camille, are you with us today? Yeah. Hello, how are you? And we've got a mole of MnO4 negative that they want us to convert into moles of electrons. Any thoughts on how you'll do that? A uh, bracket problem. I agree, right? We have a link between the moles of anything and moles of something else in the equation, right? So you could do either equation. You could do it after you make them opposite and equal, or you could do it just based on the half reaction. The ratio will stay the same, all right? So what's the MnO4? On the bottom, still coming. Sorry, yeah. So that's a one, right? Because of the lack of a coefficient in front of that guy. And what is the mole of electron coefficient? Five. That's a five, and she got that from right here, right? And it wouldn't have mattered anyway, even if you summed them together, right? This was five electrons. You flip this guy, you'd have just multiplied that reaction by five. So the coefficient stays the same. So Camille, that's easy math. How many moles of electrons get moved? Five. You got it. All right, so we got 5.0 moles of electrons that are getting moved. All right, so that's what's going on for letter C. All right, into D, it says calculate the equilibrium constant at 25 degrees Celsius and explain what KEQ tells you about the extent of the reaction, all right? So they want us to find K, and at this point, all right, we know the E cell, and we know stuff about moles of electrons that get moved, all right? And let's see, Ethan, you with us? Yeah. Yeah, any thoughts on how we can find K? Um, we could use the, the equation. Yeah, right? there's an equation, right? Do you remember what that equation is? I don't remember exactly, but I remember there's an equation to get the K. There is an equation to get the K. Anybody remember what it is? Sorry, I'm just erasing. Otherwise, I would tell you. And that's okay, because that might happen to you on the test. And where are equations at when you get on the test? Wouldn't it be on the equation sheet? Exactly. So if you're not sure, what I'm doing is I'm scrolling up into here and trying to find the equation that has uh, what we're looking for. So we look in here. Right Here's our oxidation reduction, our electrochem stuff. Right, what equation are we looking at that has what we want? Uh, the, the last one. There right. it is, right? We've yeah. got log K is equal to N EO over 0 0.0592. All right, so take over from there for me. Um, Abby, you with us? Okay. All right. That's okay. All right. So do you remember what N stands for in our equation? Um, is it moles? It's moles. Moles of what? Um, electrons. Very good. So you can get that from your reaction here, right? So you scroll down. What was our moles of electrons after we got them to be equal and opposite? You got it. So we know we've got five. All right, what do you think EO is? 
Um, 0.72. I like it. The 0. 0.72 volts. <coughs> and you got the 0. 0.0592 there on the bottom. All right, so I run some math real quick for you guys. We take 5 times the 0. 0.72, and you divide that by 0. 0.0592. All right, and I've got... 60.8. So I've got log K equals 61. All right. Now it's just a math problem. All right. Abs, do you know how to undo uh, the log function? Um, raise it to the 10. Very good. 10 to the power of. So we go 10 to the power. And on your calculator, that's a second log button, second button right underneath the second button. So 10 carat 61, and we get a big value. K is equal to right, 1 times 10 to the 61st. All right, so there's your value of your equilibrium constant. And it says, what does it tell you about the extent of the reaction? Uh, Carmen, are you with us? Yes. All right, so Carmen... Start simple. Is that a big number or a little number for K? Big. Big number. Do you remember what it means if K is a big number? I do not. All right. Uh, Shane, you remember what it means if K is big? I'm not sure. That's okay. All right. Anybody remember what it means if you have a big K value? Big is the products. Yeah, big time. Remember... K is products over reactants, right? Raised to their power. So a big K means tons and tons of product. All right, so this means the reaction pretty much goes totally to completion, that we get all products and we don't have any reactants left. And that should make sense because, you know, it's spontaneous. It's favorable for it to occur. So all you want to write to follow that out is the following. You could say the large K indicates the reaction goes to completion. Wait, I'm sorry. Can you say that again? It yeah, no like problem. glitched out. Yeah, no problem. All right, so one more time. Right, the large K value indicates that products dominate and the reaction goes to completion. Thank you. No problem. Uh, anybody else need a repeat on that? All right, and you guys can go ahead and cross off the bottom part here, the three solutions. All right, cross that out. That is all um, not in the AP scope anymore. All right, that would be Nernst equation stuff, and they want to know who has higher concentration, but we don't need to be able to do any of those uh, types of things. You have notes on it if you need to look it up uh, for college stuff. All right, questions there on uh, A through D of the 2010. Okay, good stuff, good stuff. All right, so let us turn to, all right, let's go to 2017, number seven. Oh, there we go. All right, so if you look at these guys, this would be 
um, what we call one of the short free responses right, in the AP uh, setup, right? They're only designed to take about seven to eight minutes. So you usually only get, you know, one, maybe two topics, all right, max. All right, so this one here was electrochem themed. It said a student was determined uh, the concentration of H2O2 in a solution. They can use one of two titrants, either dichromate ion, right, the CR207, or the cobalt-2 ion, CO2+. Plus. Uh, and the balanced chemical equations for each of the titrations are shown below. All right, so here's what it's if it looks like if we use the CR207 titration. And here's what your overall equation is if we use the CO2+, plus for the reaction. And notice, they both have the H2O2 in it because that's what they're trying to figure out. So they said you've got the half reactions and the uh, EO values uh, for the systems related to titrations in the table there. All right, so we've got the CO plus three gaining an electron going to CO plus two, which is tying into this equation. You've got the H2O2 gaining two H plus and two electrons going to water. That's both equations doing that. We've got the dichromate gaining six electrons going to CR plus three. That's linked to this top equation. And then we've got the H2O2 going to H plus and the O2, all right, which is linked into this equation, right? Because this is the one that has the O2 in it. All right, so it says, use the information to calculate the following. It wants to know what is the EO for the reaction between all right, the CR2072 negative and the H2O2. So this is all about just picking the right equations. So start simple, all right, Angel, which equation are we looking at if we're working with the CR207? The In third one down. Be, uh, let's talk up here to start. Um, the first one. The first one. So they're referring to this equation. And then Angel said, well, hey, I know when we jump down here, I've got to be referencing the third equation. Right? And the reason I had you link it to back up here isn't for this step, it's for the next one. So watch. Angel said, okay, I know. We've got the CR2, O7, 2 negative, plus your 14H plus, plus your six electrons, going to CR plus three, plus your seven waters. And we know the reduction potential for that guy is 1.33. Uh, the reason why I said look up above is it gets a little trickier Right, because we've got two different equations that have H2O2 in them. You've got this guy here, and you've got this guy here. Right? So you had to realize that we were talking about this reaction. So we need to get this up here to be our reaction, which tells us which of the H2O2 equations should we use, this one, or this one, and that could be for anybody. Call it equation two or equation four. Equation two. Right. Why are you saying equation two? No, never mind. Wrong one. Equation four. Tell me why you have to be equation four. Because there's a there's O two and. The original and there's O2 and the and equation for that. I like it, right? So uh, Yun said, hey, we have O2 in this reaction, and that's what's telling me to use this one, right? And you know the CR207 has to stay on the left to make that equation, which means each of these we're going to get flipped, right? 
So I have to flip these. And if I flip it, this guy gives me the O2 I'm looking for. All right. So if I flip that bottom one, I get H2O2. And then I get O2 plus 2H plus plus two electrons. And I can list the E cell because the only thing I'm concerned about is whether I flipped it or not. Right? Because I flipped it, what is the value for like the E cell? What's my EO going to be for just this half reaction, Alexandra? Um, it's going to be negative. Do you know the number? Negative what? 0.70. You got it. Negative 0.70. All right. So I can get uh, the EO value, right? We just take our 1.33 minus our 0 0.70. And we get 0 0.63 volts. All right. Now, technically, they didn't ask us for the balanced equation. I just want you to realize why that is going to work out. Before I would combine these, what do we always have to do before we combine them? Same amount of electrons. Same amount of electrons. I have two electrons here and six here. Uh, what do you have to do to the bottom one? Times it by three. Times it by three. He goes to six. So now my six electrons and my six electrons go away. I've got 3H2O2, which stayed. I've got the Cr207, which stayed. I had 14H+. plus. This just said 8. Well, that's because there's 6H pluses here and 14 here. Those guys would simplify down to 8. And then I've got the Cr plus 3. All right, that was here. And sorry, I dropped that coefficient. That was there. I just forgot to write it when we did this. And then I've got the seven waters. So that's why it adds up to that target equation. But the short and sweet is you had 0.63 volts for them. All right. This guy here says the EO for the reaction between the CO plus two and the H2O2. So now they want you to get this equation. All right, why don't you guys take a second, all right, see if you guys can work that out real quick. Right, and then we'll see what you guys came up with. How do we know which equation to flip? How do you need to make your bottom equations match that guy? Oh, okay. That and sense. that's going to tell you who to flip and who stays.
All right, so take a peek up at mine. Here was my first equation. It was this guy. All right, why did I flip this equation? The CO3 was on the other side. Exactly, right? Up in here, I needed the CO plus 2 on the left and the CO plus 3 on the right, so it's backwards. So I'm forced to make it match. So I flipped this guy, which made me go negative 1.84 on my voltage over here. And then I needed H2O2. Why didn't I use this guy for my H2O2 equation again? Why did I jump up and use this guy instead? Because it would make it have a more positive E cell. Mm, well, we ended up being negative. Don't overthink it. It's the same reason I flipped this guy. Why do I have to use this one? There's no O2 in that second equation. Exactly. I have no O2 in this equation, and there is nothing I can do, right, if I use this equation and pair it with this guy to eliminate that oxygen from that balanced equation. So that's why we didn't use this, guys. We had to make it match this one. And that means we used the 1.77 volts. It stayed the way it was written, right? So it's a positive. But when we add them together, we get negative 0.07 volts, right, when we do that. All right. Questions from you guys on letter A there. All right, so you drop in to letter B. It says, Based on the calculated EO, the student must choose the titrant that's thermodynamically favorable, right? So which of the titrants should we pick and why? Uh, cobalt. Tell me why. Um, because since the E value is negative, which means it's it's going to be thermodynamically favorable. I like the analysis, you're just backwards, right? Negative voltage doesn't mean favorable. Positive voltage means thermodynamically favorable. Negative delta G means favorable, all right? So you guys want to say, I want to use the CR207 because the positive EO indicates it's thermodynamically favorable. CR207 because the positive voltage indicates thermodynamically favorable. All right, questions on that one? All right, wrapping things up then. All right, calculate the delta G in kilojoules per mole for the reaction all right, um, between the chosen titrant and the H2O2. All right, so we want to find delta G, and we have an E cell. If we take a look, hopefully we find an equation that links those. You don't remember it off the top of your head. We scroll up, right? You start searching your equation sheet. So we look, we look. All right, here is our stuff with thermodynamics and electrochem. Right. So based on the fact that we want delta G, and we're looking for, I'm sorry, we're looking for delta G and we have EO. All right, Elena, what equation do you like from this page? Um, delta G equals negative F EO. Very good. Delta G equals negative N F E O. All right, so. We're going to use that equation. All right, so we start plugging in. 
right? The stuff that we know, right? If we do that, see, and if I didn't pick anybody yet, Rocco, all right, Rocco, talk to me about what we know from what we've done so far. All right, do you know your Delta G? Oh, Rock, are you with us? Oh, negative Ghost Rider. Uh, how about Ethan? Can you take that one? What was it again? Sorry, I was muted. It's okay. All right. Uh, we're looking for, in this equation, which ones do we know? Um... We know the F. That's a constant. It is. What is it? Uh, crap. Uh, I don't remember the con. It's like 96,500 or something like it's that. Close to that. And let's use the one from this sheet that we have listed. Take a look. Here's your list of constants here and uh, here. What is it? It is 96,485. Good. And our label there is joules per coulomb. All right, keep going. What else do you know? Um, you would know the the east the ESO, right? Uh huh. What is it? Uh, which equation is this one again? We decided uh, to use the red one. The red one. So then that would be point six three. You got it. Point sixty three volts. All right. And remember, coulombs and volts can cancel, right? Because coulombs per mole of electrons is a volt. And then yeah. lastly, what's N? Um, Just generically, not what is it specifically in this setup? What is oh, uh, that is uh, moles. Moles of electrons. So we look up here. What was our moles of electrons from this reaction? I don't remember. Um, Look at my screen. Have it up. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Um, six. Yeah, it's six. Sorry, it was a little okay. bit crossed out there. Yeah. All right, so that's a six. All right, so we do our math on that, right? We guys, we're going to take six times the 96,485 times the 0.63. And here's where you got to be careful. We get 364,713. But look at your label. What is that label in? And that's for anybody. Just Jules. Just Jules. And they specifically asked us to solve this guy in? Kilojoules. Kilojoules. So how do we get Jules into kilojoules? Divide by 1,000. Divide by 1,000. So if you do this up right, looks like we're going to say it is 300 and 60 because we only get two six for this guy kilojoules per mole right, so just watch out that's one of those instances you have to work to make your unit match right. questions on that guy uh, to confirm, kilojoule is bigger, right? Uh, one more time. Is, is kilojoule bigger than joules or I take damn backwards? I never think about who's bigger than who. I just think about it like this. Just know that one kilojoule is a thousand joules. And then you can just set up the bracket problem, right? You had joules. You wanted it to be kilojoules, which meant it was one kilojoule on top over a thousand joules on the bottom and that and that was our number from our calculator so i always just remember this relationship don't think like oh this one's bigger than this one's just oh a kilojoule is a thousand joules and then quick set up the bracket okay that way you'll never miss it 
Okay. All right. So two to go. One short one and one more long one. Let's do the short one to get that out of the way. So find your way to number six. It doesn't have a year on the top. It's from a practice test. Uh, I don't remember which, so I'm just going to kind of sketch it. Okay. So find the one that has that big beaker with a line across the top. And you've got a water molecule that looks like Mickey Mouse. And we've got our LICL crystal, which is entirely too big for me to be drawn with the paint thing. All right, just to give you an idea which one we're talking about. All right, so if you find your way to that one, it says uh, the structure of the water molecule and a crystal of lithium chloride are represented above. Student preps a one molar solution by dissolving 4.2 grams of LICL in enough water to make 100 mils of solution, right? So it says in the space provided, show the interactions, right, of the components of LICL aqueous by making a drawing that represents the different particles present right, in the solution. Base the particles in your drawing on uh, the particles shown in the representations above, include only one formula unit of the LICL and no more than 10 molecules of water. Your drawing must include the ions, their symbol and their charge, and the proper orientation of the particles. All right, so start simple. Once it gets dissolved in the water, what is the LICL gonna look like? A bunch of Li plus and Cl negative ions. Good, now they told us Let's just do one unit of LICL, which means we've got Li pluses and we've got Cl minuses. All right, now, they might not get this specific, but we want to reflect reality. Who is big and who is small based on your picture of the crystal? Li is small. Why? Um, well, it only has two like rings with electrons. Very good, right? Lithium's got three electrons, right? So it's 1s2, 2s1. And then when it becomes plus one, it actually only has one ring around it, right? But either way, as long as you drew the Cl, which is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, Cl negative, uh, is having a much larger sphere than the Li, you're doing good so far. All right, so, so far, so good. That's what our ions look like. Now they want to know what is water going to look like when it lines up next to it. Right? Anybody think they can field how the waters are going to line up next to the lithium? Um, the um, negative of the O's line up. Right. So people said the negative of the O's lining up, right? which means we've got that set up, right? The oxygen. And they said, don't include more than 10. Right. So I'm sure if you just drew a couple, you would be fine. All right. So that set up there, the dashes, remember what do dashes indicate? Um, like IFs. IFs, right? Dashes indicate IFs, lines indicate bonds. And then if we did the CL, it's going to be the reverse. It's going to be the hydrogen end lining up with the CLs. So that's what was going on there in uh, six with letter A. All right, questions on that one. All right, so why did I drop this into the electrochem? It's because of part B that you see down here. It says a student passes a current through the solution and observes that chlorine gas is produced, right, at the anode, right? Identify the chemical species, 
uh, produced at the cathode and justify it using the table below. All right, so you guys know some stuff based on the fact what they told you about what was going on. So you had this beaker, which has CL negatives in it. It's got waters in it. And it's got Li pluses in it. You pump an electric current through it. And they're telling us that at the anode, what's getting created at the anode? Chlorine. Chlorine gas, right? which means you know what the other side of this is. Where's the chlorine gas coming from, from our beaker? Like what has to be the source of it? The LACL crystal. Yeah, but specifically the CL negative, right? Because they're talking about it was in solution, right? So the CL negative is turning into Cl2 with two electrons, right? And just move that over so I can balance it. Right, so I know this is happening at the anode. And that all makes sense, right? Because oxidation occurs at the anode, the anox, this guy losing electrons all right, so the electrons are on the right, and they told me we create the Cl2. They're asking me, what is going to show up at the cathode? All right, so if we take a look and we try to decide uh, what's going to show up at the cathode, we have two options of who's going to be over here, something involving water or something involving the lithium plus. All right, so if you take a look, right, who do we think is the more likely culprit to be over here based on what you're seeing for your reduction potentials in that little chart? Lithium. Why do you think lithium? Because um, it has the larger number. So I like your analysis, but your conclusion is wrong. What's a bigger number? Negative 3.05 or negative 0.83? 0.83. Yeah. So you were doing the right thing. You realize that I'm looking for the more positive one between the lithium and sorry, this takes a while. The two H two O plus the two electrons going toward the H two plus the two O H negative. All right, so that's negative point eight three. Right. So these were my two choices of what's going to happen. Right. So we're going to favor this guy because it has a more positive E cell. Right. And in this case, it's more accurately said it has a less negative E cell. So the waters will get reduced before the lithiums because they have a more positive E cell. You knew this other side had to be the oxidation. So this was a sneaky question because usually you want to look at these and say, oh, who flips and who stay? Like, you know, this was like pick which one of these is the better option. And it's this one just because it's more positive. All right. So for that bottom one, all right, it asks you identify the species produced at the cathode, right? You guys want to say hydrogen gas gets produced at the cathode. because the water has a more favorable reduction potential. Okay. 
So one more time. Hydrogen gas is produced at the cathode because the water has a more favorable reduction potential. Can you repeat the last part of that again? Uh, sure. Because the water has a more favorable reduction potential. Anybody else need a repeat there? Okay. All right. Last but not least, find your way to 2015 free response. All right, and if I were a betting man, my guess is that your AP free response is going to be flavored like this because it's very application heavy or it's going to be uh, a lab analysis. So uh, starting you know next week, uh, we are going to do a ton of lab free responses and a ton of these application ones. Uh, just to make sure you guys are nice and strong, uh, feeling that you know you're good at those styles, so that you're real comfortable when you see them. All right. So that being said, it says we've got a metal air cell, all right, or a new type of portable energy source, all right, consisting of a metal anode, right there, and an alkaline electrolyte paste. All right that contains water and a porous cathode membrane that lets in oxygen from the air. All right, a schematic of the cell is shown above and the reduction potentials all right, for the cathode and three possible anodes are here. All right, so uh, your cathode and your three possible anodes. All right, so, all right, so here's, Here's what they like to do. They like to take something that I'm pretty sure you're confident in doing, and they try to just gunk it up by making it look different than you're used to, right? So let's just look at this. Before we even get into questions, you know the anode, you know the cathode. Does it make sense that electrons are flowing this way? Yes. Yes. Tell me why. Because the anode releases electrons and cathodes. Exactly. Right. 100%. Anode, we always have electrons flowing from the anode to the cathode, right? So this is a normal cell, right? So if we were thinking about our normal cells, here's our voltmeter, here's the switch opens and closes, right? Here's the cathode, and if I had oxygen gas, I'd usually drop what in here? because oxygen can't be the electrode. What would I make the electrode out of? Platinum. platinum. Platinum, right? Well, they just said, okay, you're not using platinum. You've got some sort of paste that lets the oxygen in, okay? Like a porous membrane that lets the O2 in. And what is the role of the electrolyte paste then? What haven't we listed that is always in our cells? To be the uh, electrode. 
uh, the, the electrolyte paste is the salt bridge. This stuff here, this porous material is the electrode at the cathode. The electrolyte paste is simply the salt bridge. All right, so if we start thinking in those terms, it looks a whole lot more normal. All right, so we got these here. So I'm sorry, we're gonna have to scroll up and down a lot because it's on two different pages. All right, but it says early forms of the metal air cells used zinc at the anode. So they said we had zinc over here. And zinc oxide is produced as the cell operates according to the equation. So here's the equation. It says using the data in the table above, calculate the cell potential. So we just did something like this, all right? If we were gonna do this, all right, Camille, like, here's your equation, right? We're deciding what to use up here. Tell me one thing you'd use from up there and why. Uh, you would use the second one. Good, why? ZN and ZNO in it. All right, good, what are you gonna have to do to that second one? Flip it. Flip it, so let's go ahead and start by doing that. So we've got Zn plus the two OH negative going to ZnO plus water plus two electrons. And we know that when that gets flipped, it's positive 1.31 volts because this guy was negative. Right, so you know one of your reactions. Right? On gel, right, do you think you can spot what the other reaction is going to be and why? So, so far we've gotten the Zn and we've gotten the ZnO. Who do we still need for our equation? Oh, did I lose on you? Okay. Uh, how about Carmen? You still here? Yes. Okay. All right. So, Carm, who do we still need? From the, the O2. Good. What equation has the O2 in it? The first one. Yeah. Do we keep it the same or do we flip it? Um, Keep it the same. All right. Which means we're looking at O2 plus the 2H2O. Arrow. Four electrons. <laughs> Thanks for the message, John Shell. Sorry, that's a plus there. Going to your 4OH negative. Uh, and we didn't do anything to it. So, Carm, what's the voltage going to be for my green guy there? Uh, positive 0.34. All right, good. Take a quick second. Tell me what that math's going to be. Me still? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, 1.65. You got it. All right. So we don't even have to balance that guy out, right, for this one. And we just know that was our setup, right, because we have the voltages. All right. Questions on that first? All right. Two says the electrolyte paste contains OH negative. So here's my paste, which you guys told me is the salt bridge. And it says there's OH negatives in there. On the diagram of the cell above, which I sort of have sketched here, draw an arrow to indicate how the OH negatives are going to move as the cell operates in the salt bridge. All right. So, uh, Sid, are you with us? How about Shane? You still with us? Yes. All right, Shane, do you think you know which direction those OH negatives are going to move? Is it to the right? Why do you think to the right? 
Since the ZN is in the cathode or the anode, mm -hmm. when it goes, yeah, I don't know. That's okay. So remember, I always say in the salt bridge, who chases the electrons? The positive. Positive. Yeah. positive. Like, remember, your positives chase your electrons, so they're attracted to it. So the electrons are ending up over here to the right. Which means who's not going to like the electrons? The OH negative. There it is. So you guys are going to want to draw the OH negative moving to the left toward the anode. Right? Away from the electrons, right? Because they're going to have repulsion with all that negative charge sitting at the cathode. All right, so that's all that was. It didn't ask you to... Uh, even explain why. It just wanted you to say the migration, so just draw an OH negative and an arrow that points to the left. All right, so here we have a fresh zinc air cell. All right, it's on a balance before being placed into the hearing aid for use. It says, as the cell operates, does the mass of the cell increase, decrease, right, or remain the same? All right, so you take a look. We've got Zn in this half reaction, solid. We've got ZnO, which is a solid. And we've got these ions. We've got water. We've got electrons. Here, we've got O2, which is a gas, and water and all ions. All right, so if you look at your picture up here, at the anode, zinc is turning into zinc oxide, solid to solid. And over here, oxygen's coming in and becoming uh, hydroxide ions that are now like in this porous area. So this guy's a little bit sneakier because it's not a standard plating problem. All right. So I will say what this one is. I would say uh, the mass increases. Because the cell is taking in oxygen gas while the zinc turns into heavier zinc oxide. And so the cell is taking in oxygen gas and the zinc is turning into heavier zinc oxide because it's combining it with the oxygen. All right, now it makes it heavier. And that actually answers both parts of B. All right, so that can be BI and II. All right, questions on that one? All right, uh, letter C. Uh, it says the zinc air cell is taking to the top of a mountain where the pressure is lower. Will the cell potential be higher, lower, or the same as the cell at lower elevation? All right, so you look at your reaction, which is listed right here. If the pressure's lower, who is that affecting in our equation? The O2. The O2. Why is the pressure lower at the high altitude? Because there's less O2. There's less O2. So less oxygen is decreasing O2, right? So we're decreasing on the left. That's going to cause a shift. Which direction? Left. To the left. 
And if we shift opposite the way the reaction is written, what happens to your cell potential? Decrease. Decrease. If you shift opposite the direction the reaction is written, it decreases the cell potential. If we shift with it, it increases it. So go ahead and write down the following for letter C. Cell potential will be lower at the higher altitude there is less O2 which causes a shift left in the reaction. And one more time, cell potential will be lower because at the higher altitude, there's less oxygen, which causes a shift left in the reaction. Uh, letter D. Uh, D says metal air cells need to be lightweight for many applications. In order to transfer more electrons with a smaller mass, Na and Ca are investigated as potential anodes. All right, it says a one gram anode of which of these metals will transfer more electrons, assuming the anode is totally consumed during the lifetime of a cell. All right, so we have 1.0 grams of Na, and CA. And they're asking who transfers more electrons. So we want to convert this into moles of electrons. All right, so we've done that. How do we convert mass into moles of electrons? Mole to mole ratio. Yeah, it's mole to mole ratio, right? So first step in each is easy enough. Periodic table. into moles and then we have to go another step where we convert moles of the thing into moles of electrons. And what do we need to do a mole-mole ratio? You need an equation. Need an equation. Where did we have equations listed at? The front page. Front page. So we look in here. Here's an equation that has Na with moles of electrons. Here's one that has Ca with moles of electrons. What's your ratio of Na to moles of electrons? Two to two. And what's your ratio of Ca to moles of electrons? One to two. One to two. All right, so you could do the math on this, right? But this guy's basically gonna be two over 40, which is one over 20. And this guy, basically undoes itself. This guy is going to be 1 over 23, right? Who moves more moles of electrons? CA. The CA. All right, so just finish running that math out uh, to get that. All right, questions on that one? All right, last one, and we'll get you out of here. Right. It says the only common oxide of zinc has the formula ZNO, and then they shift gears on you. They say, right, what's the electron configuration right, for ZN in the ground state? What is it they want you to write here? 
Uh, the 1s2, 2s2. The electron is 30, so it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10. All right, so there's your electron configuration for the Zn. And then lastly, it says, from which sublevel are the electrons removed when the Zn is oxidized? So which electrons are the first to go? 4s2. There it is. So it's the 4s sublevel to finish that guy out. 